In this video, I want to show you how you can use the symbology functions in ArcGIS to format your maps in various key ways. So what I have here is a map of census tracts in El Paso County, Colorado. Okay. Um, just to give you a sense of what that data looks like, I'm going to open up the attribute table. And what I've already done, besides getting the tracks, is um, join some additional data. So you'll notice that a lot of the earlier variables that are included in the shapefile um, that are in uppercase, that data is a little older. So what I've done is simply added new data um, later on here after the FIPS2 code, you'll see I've got data on population total, the number who are white non-Hispanic, the number who are black non-Hispanic, and so on. Um, American Indian, Alaska Native non-Hispanic, Asian non-Hispanic, um, Native Hawaiian Pacific Islander non-Hispanic, other non-Hispanic, two or more, race non-Hispanic, and then Latinx. And then I've got the percentages of each of those groups, along with median household income. The POVSTAT is the number of people we know the poverty status of. Some are poor, some are not. Of those, that's this is the number who fall below the poverty line, and then this is the um, percentage, right? So that's the data that we have. And what we can do is using that data, we can format maps in, in various ways. Now, what kinds of maps you make is part of a broader discussion. I don't want to get into that in this video. That's uh, something we can talk about outside of this video. Um, but I want to show you just how you accomplish formatting a few different things. I'll show you how to do choropleth maps, how to do uh, graduated symbols, and dot density. Okay, so I'm just going to close this attribute table. So once you've got your data set constructed like this and you want to uh, format it, you would just right click on it and go to symbology. What that'll do is it'll create a, a panel over here on the right that you can click on that bar right there to open up. And so to, you know, in this first drop down, let's just start with uh, graduated colors. This would be like your standard choropleth. Um, you could either do graduated colors or unclassed colors, right? With graduated colors, you're going to have, you know, like, let's say five gradations, five different color gradations. Unclassed is a sort of a continuous, smooth thing, and you can see the examples there. Um, there's reasons for going with one or the other. For right now, I'll just go with graduated colors. Then you want to select your field, which is the variable that you want to look at. So if I want to look at median household income, for example, I'll just scroll all the way down and I can just click on MHI. Um, and then it reformats and notice that it's using five graduated color scheme. Now I don't like this color scheme because it's painful to look at. So you might want to pick something that's uh, a little more aesthetically pleasing. This color ramp actually is appropriate, uh, accessible for people who are who suffer from some uh, form of color blindness, for example, that they can still distinguish the colors here. Um, so that's how you can do a pretty simple uh, choropleth. That's if you have a variable that does not require any sort of normalization. It's just median household income. It's the point at which half of households in each track make more and half make less. What if you wanted to do a percentage? Now, I already have PPOV. I could just do PPOV. This is percent impoverished. What if I didn't have that pre-calculated? What I could do is put the number of people below the poverty line over the number of people we know the poverty status of. Okay, and that's going to give me the same basic calculation. It's a, it's you know, not quite as neat as having pro poverty rate already pre-calculated, but um, so that's how you can play around with this. You can adjust the classes. I would generally stick with the default, which is five classes. You may want to go to four on occasion. I would be hesitant to go more than that um, because it's difficult for people to sort of match up the color relative to the uh, color ramp and so on. Okay, so that's how you do a, uh, a choropleth, if you will. Um, let me show you how to do a graduated symbol. Here, you would, you instead of you know colors for each census tract, you get a symbol for a particular um, variable. So on this one, I'll click and go down. And let's say we want to ref, uh, a symbol that represents the poverty rate. And you can set the, the minimum size and the maximum size. So if I go down to, let's say, 2 and then set this one to max out at 10, let's see what that looks like. 
That looks a little bit better if I zoom in. Maybe those dots are, that's a little bit better. Um, let me set that back to two. You'll notice as I zoom in and out, things can often adjust. Uh, maybe you want to set this a little higher, something like that. So it's possible that you could overlay this atop something else. So this is a graduated uh, symbol map. Okay. Um, maybe you want to do it by the number of poor people. So rather than the poverty rate, you do it by the number of people who are actually impoverished. And you can see what the, the scales are here in this legend. Okay. Uh, last one, let me just show you how to do a dot density. I don't do these very often, but sometimes there might be reason to. Uh, what you'll notice that each dot represents 80 of that thing. Okay, now what is the thing right now? It's just set to no nothing, not object ID. What if I were to set that to uh, the number of people below poverty level? Okay, and right now it's it's each dot is size two and each dot represents four people. And those dots are randomly distributed within their census tract. So they're not exactly where people live, but you can sort of see the higher density um, in some parts of Colorado Springs versus others. Okay, um, you could let's say you wanted to look at a bunch of uh, the population by race and ethnicity, the numbers of people let's say who are white non-Hispanic, and then I could go down, scroll down to the new data, uh, black non-Hispanic. I'm not going to add every everybody in here. That's going to take too long. So I'll just add you know a few groups here. Um, and notice I'm using the raw numbers, not the percentages. So we'll just do these four. Um, and then I'd want to color them by a particular, so I'm going to right click on that dot for white non-Hispanic and I'll make them red. Uh, for black non-Hispanic, I'll make them blue. For Latinx, I'll right click and make them uh, gold. And for Asian non-Hispanic, I'll make them green. And then I'll leave it at two point for the dot size, but then the dot value, let's set that to 25 and see what that looks like. And it kind of gives you a sense of, again, all the dots representing 25 people of that particular race or ethnicity um, randomly distributed within that census tract. So it's not where they all live actually. Um, you'll notice that as I move in and out, it gets harder or easier to, to read, things like that. So you might have to adjust your uh, settings um, in different ways. You can change the dot size, you can increase the dot value to 50 or 35 or or lower it to 15. You have to kind of play around with it. Okay, so that's how you can do the uh, choropleth and the symbology, um, uh, dot density and graduated symbol uh, all through the symbology um, function.